The National Broadcasting Company presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. The message was received by the State Department in Washington shortly before midnight. Within an hour after decoding, there was a feverish burst of activity in the offices of the Atomic Energy Commission, counterintelligence, and at the Bureau in New York City. So Professor Chorney has disappeared. That's right, Ken. It apparently happened three weeks ago. Where, Chief? At Los Alamos? No, much worse. At Linz, Austria. Hmm, on the border of the American-Russian zone. Yeah. What was Chorney doing there? His family disappeared there during the war. A month ago, he took a leave of absence from his nuclear fission work at uh, Los Alamos. One last stab at finding them. That's so, Chief. Ken, I don't have to tell you that Professor Chorney is one of the greatest living experts on nuclear fission. Yeah, I know. Why, his mind contains secrets that would be worth, well, almost anything to certain interested nations. That's right. For Pete's sake, Ken, what's the matter with you? Don't you realize what this might mean? Chorney disappears only 25 miles from Czechoslovakia. Well... What if he's being held somewhere behind the Iron Curtain? Being questioned. Well, officially, the Bureau can hardly go into Czechoslovakia on the strength of a guess. I know we can't. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Don't you have any suggestions? Uh, Chief, what do you know about music boxes? Music boxes? Yeah. Like the one I got here. Came to my apartment, Air Express, this morning. When you phoned me, I thought I'd bring it along. Now, wait a minute, Ken. What are you driving at? It's an interesting little gadget, Chief. Listen. You like it? Ken. Sorry. By the way, did you know Professor Chorney made a hobby of collecting these things? He did? Yeah. One he was very fond of played Brahms Lullaby. Hmm. Who did you say sent you that music box? I don't know. In- there wasn't any name or return address on it, only the name of the manufacturer. The Batava Toy Company. According to the postmark, they're located in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia? Yep. Yeah. Chief. Yeah, I can? I've been working kind of hard lately. Hmm. I don't suppose you'd care for a Why, little... thanks, Chief. A vacation is just what I need. That's what I figured. Any idea what you'll do with your time? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll start collecting music boxes in Prague. Bratava's toy shop. Thanks. Is the owner around? I am Papa Bratava. Is there something I could do for you? Maybe. My name's Ken Thurston. Ah, an American? That's right. And what is it that brings you to see me, Mr. Thurston? Oh, you have quite a reputation back in the United States, Papa Bratava. Oh, that is most pleasing. Yep. You've been recommended to me as an excellent manufacturer of music boxes. Oh. You are interested in music boxes, Mr. Thurston? That's right. A friend of mine has one that came from there. I could use one just like it. And the name of this uh, friend? Could you tell me that? Yeah. Professor Chorney. Well, Papa Padava? Mr. Thurston, there is down the street from here a caverna, a cafe known as Flecus. Flecus? Yes. If you will go there, please, and wait for me, I will join you within an hour. 
Why an hour, Papa? It will take me that long to... to make up my mind, Mr. Thurston. Oh? Uh-huh. What about? If I should give you what you seek, or if I should kill you, at Fleckos within the hour then, Mr. Thurston... Ah, here is a table such as you wish, sir. Quiet, secluded. Yes, thanks, sir. I don't suppose you serve martinis. A uh, martinis? No, never mind. I'll settle for a glass of Pilsen. Yes, sir. Pilsen it shall be, sir. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, no. I'm some classy fiddle, eh, Mr. Thurston? Mm-hmm. Pagan, I never heard such atrocious caterwauling in my life. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. Mm-hmm. Better even than the music box, eh? What do you know about a music box, Pig, huh? What do I know about it? Who do you think sent it to you anyways? You? Certainly. I knew you would be interested in learning about a certain Professor Chorney party. Not mentioning any names, of course. So I said it to you. Pagan, if you had anything to do with Professor Chorney's disappearance... Oh, I... I swear by the father of my father, Mr. Thurston, I didn't have absolutely nothing to do with it. Only I, I got friends, you understand, with ears hanging to the underground. They told me. What did they tell you? Mr. X, do you think I'm the kind of a guy who gives away his friend's secrets for nothing? After all, there are certain miscellaneous expenses involved. Okay, pal. Pig on, you'll get paid. Now, where can we talk? Uh, well, uh, I got to play here another 15 minutes. And my public demands that you understand. Oh, sure, sure. No, no. But there's an alleyway behind this gypsy juke joint. I'll meet you back there when I get through. Now, now, if you will excuse me, I'll go tear a few more hearts out with my music. Well, I might have known. Ah, here is your Pilsen, sir. Thanks. Two. I didn't know I looked that thirsty. The other one is for me. Well... Do you mind? Mind? Sit down, please. Thank you. Here, keep the chain. No, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My name is Ilta. What is your name? Ken Thurston. American? American. I like Americans. I like you. Well, thanks. You would like to be friends with Ilta? Do you always make friends this quickly? Why not? Life is too short to be wasteful of it. I like you. If you like me, why should not we be friends? Well, that seems to make sense. Only I was wondering. What? About your real reason for coming to my table. Ah, you sound almost as suspicious as Kumlov. Kumlov? You do not know him? Well, should I? No. But I will not spoil this moment of our meeting by discussing him. Goodbye for now. Well, that was a pretty short friendship. Oh, no. It has hardly begun. Here. This is my address. I will see you there about 8 o'clock tonight. You seem pretty confident that I'll be there. Of course. We have much in common to talk about. Kumlov, ourselves, a missing professor. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. I am quite confident you will visit me at 8 this evening. Mr. X. Why did I pick such a dark alley to meet Mr. X anyways? I should have had my head examined. Things I do for that man out of the goodness of my heart so he can do things for me. Oh, why do I stick my foot out into it? It's like this anyways. I... So you can chisel a few bucks, Peter. <laughs> oh. 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 oh, it's only you, Mr. Thurston. Who else were you expecting? Who can tell in a dark place like this? Must be plenty of people jealous of my fiddle playing. But anyways, right now, that's neither here. You got my payoff for me? I've got it. But first, I want to hear what you know about Professor Chorney. Uh, you almost talk like, uh, you almost don't trust me, Mr. Thurst. Start talking, Peg, huh? <laughs> Well, uh, well, I was in Bratislava a couple of weeks ago, playing my fiddle in a very exclusive joint. That's when I heard this uh, couple of guys talking. Wait they a minute, were... Pagan, wait a minute. Huh? Hey, hey, that car. What are they doing? 
and flashing their flashlights in my eyes. They could be looking for us, Pete, huh? With guns in their hands? Now, that's ridiculous. Why should they... Guns! Do not move, either of you. We will fire at the first motion. Mr. Thrash! Better do as he says. Surround the two of them. At any sign of resistance, shoot. <laughs> so, now which one of you is Pagan Zellschmidt? <laughs> Pagan? Oh, Pagan Zellschmidt. Now, now, never heard of that character. You lie. But, but I swear by the father of my father. Like, like my great, great uncle George Washington Zellschmidt used to say, I cannot tell I... <laughs> Dobra. Dobrovich. Take him away. <laughs> Mr. First, do something, do something. With these guns in my back, sorry. Oh. You speak very wisely, my friend. You are not able to do anything. Uh-oh. Hey, look what you've done. You knocked him subconscious. You, okay, let go, let go of me. Into the car with him. Now to headquarters. They are most anxious to question him. Yeah, comrade Kumlov is anxious to question him. You are conscious at last, uh, Mr. Thurston. Oh, what? what? Oh, it's uh, Papa Batava. Ah, <laughs> I am pleased you are able to recognize me, Mr. Thurston. Yes, oh my. Where are we? In a room behind the Bratava Toy Company. Oh, why? I was going to Flecos to join you as agreed. I saw the car with those men turn into the alley and watch them. When they left, I brought you here. Thanks. Well, you haven't killed me. So you've apparently made up your mind to work with me. That is quite right, Mr. Thurston. Since last we were together, I... I have spoken with them. (laughs) It would seem they recommend you most highly. Well, that's nice. But just who are they? The People's Underground, Mr. Thurston. Oh. The Democratic Resistance Movement here in Czechoslovakia. Uh, some of them worked with you during the war against the Germans. I remember. And now they're still working. As long as there are those like Kumlov who seek to deprive us of liberty and freedom, we shall continue to work and to fight. Kumlov again. Who is he, Papa? He is head of a secret police organization in Czechoslovakia... Terrorists and cutthroats, all whose one aim is the destruction of everything democratic. Sounds like a pleasant soul. He wouldn't happen to be the one who's got Professor Chorney. He is? Ah, you know what that means. I do. And Professor Chorney's knowledge must be put to work for the benefit of mankind, not for its wholesale destruction. You must get the professor back to the United States before it is too late, Mr. Thurston. That's what I'm here for, Papa. What help can you offer? An underground escape route. Uh, We use it for loyal patriots who have become known to Kumlov and must leave the country to preserve their lives. Good. What is the route? (laughs) I can only tell you that from here, one goes to the Radkani Kaolin mines at Benisov. Our uh, contact there is Pietkev. Pietkev at Benisov? Yes, He will have to direct you from then on. Each station knows only the next one along the line. So, if Kumlov questions one of us, he cannot possibly get information about the whole system. What else have we got to work with? There is uh, Joseph Attaka. Attaka? One of our men who has succeeded in getting into Kumlov's secret police. He has been made a deputy commissioner. He can help us locate the professor. Good. And lastly, we can supply you with... Forged credentials, <laughs> though that will take some time, a week, perhaps. Oh, that'll be too long, Papa. Kumlov's already had three weeks with Shawnee. We've no time to waste. We'll have to... Expecting someone? Yes, Joseph Atakar. He was to come here as soon as he finished his tour of duty. I shall be right back. Come in, Joseph. I have... You. What are you doing with... No. No, don't. No! Mr. 
Please come in, Ken. Thanks, Olson. We are to be friends, then. Or are you here merely because of what I said at Flacus? That'll pretty much depend on what they, what you say now. You'd better get started, Elsa. I have a hunch time is running out. Oh? Why do you say that? Papa Botava just had a very convincing demonstration. Yeah, I know. You know why? I will answer that, comrade. Well, that gun in your fist looks familiar. Ah, you recognize me then? The alley behind Flacos wasn't that dark. Where's Pagan? He's being detained, awaiting questioning. Hmm. I suppose I'm next in line. Would your question be answered, Mr. Thurston, if I put this gun away? So, no. Oh, do you not understand, Ken? The gun was but a precaution to prevent you from some hasty action when you recognized Joseph. Joseph? Attica? That is correct, Mr. Thurston. Now, do you see, Ken? Joseph and I are with the Czech resistance movement also. Well, then why that double talk at Flerkos about Kumlov and Chorny? I recognize you from your work here during the war. I know you must be here on one or both of those matters. And I could not talk there. So... Yeah, well, you got me here. And apparently you know about Papa Potava. That is so, Mr. Thurston. I was approaching the toy shop when he was killed by one of Kumlov's men. What about the arrest of Pagan? Kumlov's orders. He seemed quite interested in obtaining information about you. Uh-huh. Do you think Pagan will talk about you? Oh, he'd talk about anything if there's a price tag attached to it. And that's what I meant by time running out. If we're going to get Professor Chorney, we've got to do it fast. Do you know where they're holding him? Yes. At the detention cell of the secret police. An old brick warehouse in the Vlatava River near the outskirts. Who's in charge there? At night? Only the captain of the guards. Squad of men. Good. Good. What do you have in mind, Ken? Atakar is Kumlov's deputy. What if he and I walk in there with a signed order to release Chorney into our custody? Oh, that is impossible. Joseph may be Kumlov's deputy, but he would hardly sign an order for you releasing the professor. Wait, Ilsa, wait. It can be done. Yes. I can obtain forged documents in an hour. Orders, credentials for Thurston. A police car for us to escape in. Then get him, Atakar. We're going after Chorney tonight. <laughs> The detention warehouse, Ken. Good. Keep the motor going, Ilsa. The minute you see us at the gate, get there fast. Yes, Ken. Okay, Attica. Let's go. Here is the professor's cell, comrades. Open it, Captain. Of course, Deputy Attica. All right, Chorney. You have visitors. Get up. I said get up. Get up! You're wasting time, Captain. Those drugs and all the questioning have left him only semi-conscious. We'll have to help him, Deputy. Of course. Come on, Chorney. On your feet. On your feet. Come along, Professor. Are oh, you who? You who, Mr. Thurston? Oh, no. Thurston? Don't forget me, Mr. Thurston. I want to get out of this my stuff, too. What is that prisoner saying? There is something wrong here. God! God, report to the frat! Hey, what did you hit him for, Mr. Thurston? Isn't he on our side? Shut up, Pigar. Keep your gun handy, Atakar. Looks like we've a long way to go. Oh, what has gone wrong in there? It is almost 15 minutes now since they left. Still, they have not... <laughs> Shot. There's trouble outside. Get to the gate, yeah. sir. The gate. All right, Joseph. Let's get him in. Come on, Professor. In the car. In the car. Mr. Thurst. Stand back, Pigar. What is it, Ken? What went wrong? Time for that later. Okay, out of car. Yeah. 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 Hey, go get in. Yes, sir. Hit it. Hit it. How 
How's the professor? It will be all right, Thurston. The questioning was uh, painful, but without any permanent injury. Good. Boy, it sure is lucky for you I broke out of that jail joint, Mr. Thurston. But those guys didn't want to know about you. Yeah, I'll bet. This is the road to Benisov, Ken. It is there we will find the first station of the Underground Railway. Yeah, at the Kaolin Mines. Our contact's a man named Pietkev. And from there, Thurston? Pietkev will have to tell us. Each station knows only the next one along the way. Say, maybe this Underground Railroad will be a cannonball express, hey, Mr. Thurston? Pagan, you better pray that it is. Because Kumlov's going to try to wreck us all the way down the line. <laughs> Go on, Pietkev. Our next shipment of Kalin goes to the Rudka porcelain factory at Merovici in the morning, Mr. Thurston. Your party will be aboard one of the freight cars. Good luck to you. There it is, Pagan, the riverboat that will take us from Merovici to Tin. Riverboat? First I bum around a freight car wrapped up in clay, and now you want me to make like, like a Belgian a boat. I, I, I wouldn't do it. I'll travel on a train by myself. Okay. But be sure to give my regards to Kumlov when he spots you. Mr. Thurston, welcome aboard. You are certain that is the Kutna shoe factory just ahead, Ken? According to the directions of Tin, it's got to be, Elsa. And the Austrian border must lie just a short distance beyond. Yeah. The professor's journey back to freedom is almost over. Why are you always worrying about him? He's been sleeping practically the whole trip. After what he's been through, he deserves some rest, Pega. Hey, you sure this shoe factory is the place we go, Mr. Thurston? No lights on inside. Well, the night watchman will be there. He's our contact. Come on, Edgar. Let's find him. I'm with you, Thurston. Hey, me too, me too. I'm not going to stay out here in the dark alone with only a woman and an old man for company. Always the gentleman, eh, Pagan? Oh, sure. Let him go with you, Ken. The professor and I will be all right. Okay, sir. Come on. Believe you me, Mr. Thurston, I'm going to be one happy chump when he leaves this wedgy workshop and get across that border. Huh, what a way to get from one country to another. Umlov would be willing to give up everything he has in Czechoslovakia if he could destroy this escape route, Zerschmidt. Ah, here's the door, Thurston. But I do not see any sign of the watchman around. No more do I. Door's open. Let's go in. Hey, it's darker in here than in the dark outside. There's a, oh, here's, there's a desk here. There should be a lamp on it. Yeah, there it is. Ah, that's better. Now let's see if we can find that watchman. I would not worry about that if I were you, Zellschmidt. You were never going to cross the border anyway. <laughs> that's what you think. Believe me, the quicker I get out of Czechoslovakia, the faster I... Mr. Thurston, he's got a gun. Yeah. What's that mean, Atakan? A glance through the window will show you what it means. A glance through the... Mr. Thurston, there are lights out there and men and guns. Yes, Zellschmidt. You have reached the end of your travels. Mr. Thurston, what's the matter with this joker anyways? Has he blown his noggin or something? That's well, pretty simple, Pagan. Kumlov's learned what he'd give his soul to learn, if he had one. The escape route. The members of the Underground Railway. The names of resistance leaders in every town we've visited. Kumlov? Yes, Zellschmidt. I am Kumlov. Oh, no, oh, no. Let's, let's, let's... You had it all carefully planned, didn't you, Kumlov? even to the master stroke of letting us rescue Professor Chorney. Why not? There was no risk involved. When I learned our destination at the last stop, I sent word to my local deputy to meet us here with his men. Besides, you did not know us for what we were. Ilse and I could have killed you at any time if necessary. Ilse? You, you, you mean that pretty Petunia is working with this no good? Sure. She had to be a pagan. Kumlov had every little detail carefully worked out except one. I doubt that I overlooked anything, Thurston. Do you? <clears throat> then maybe you'd better take a look out of that window. Huh? Those men out there aren't your secret police. They're members of the resistance. The resistance? <laughs> You're mad. No, Kumlov. You're not the only one who made preparations at our last stop. I told the underground contact there all about you and Ilsa. What you hope to gain by this fairy tale, I do not know, Thurston. How could you possibly have known about us? Elsa said she recognized me and 
proud because I'd worked there during the war. I recognized her too, Kumloff. She was working for the Nazis then. Go on. Batava said it would take a week to get forged credentials for me. You got them within an hour. There was no time to forge them, so they must have been real. And who but Kumloff could have put the genuine signature on them? You are telling the truth, aren't you, Thurston? These things you say, they are the truth. That's right, Kumloff. You and Ilsa are the ones who reached the end of your travels. Yes. So it would seem. But you might end yours also, Thurston. Mr. Rick! Down, Beagle! Down, Beagle! shot me. I'm dead. I'm dead. Dying even. Oh, relax. <laughs> Those bullets didn't come within three feet of you. Mm, but, but everything's gone dark. That's because I smashed the lamp, you idiot. Oh, then everything's... Hey, hey where's Kumlov? He beat it out the door. Then he's getting away. He's, he is getting away. No, Pagan. His kind never get away. You know, Kumlov thought he could destroy a, an escape route to freedom. But nobody can do that. There's nothing powerful enough to close the doorway to freedom for the peoples of this earth. I guess our job is to see that nobody tries. Come on, Pagan. We'd better get Professor Chorney home. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, the mysterious disappearance of an obscure plantation owner leads Ken Thurston to a rendezvous in Rangoon. That becomes a rendezvous with death. And need I add that Leon Velasco will be along as Pagan Zelfrit. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production and is directed by Jack John Stone with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. Heard in tonight's cast were Jeanette Nolan as Ilsa, Tony Barrett as the guard, Lou Merrill as Bratava, Gerald Moore as Atacar, and Will Wright as the chief. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. So, until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Sunday is a big day on NBC. It's a big day because of the big show. Tallulah Bankhead is MC, and your stars in Sunday's hour and a half broadcast include Fred Allen, Jimmy Durante, Ethel Merman, Frankie Lane, Mindy Carson, Meredith Wilson, and a host of others. All this in Tallulah, too. Yes, it's the big show, an hour and a half every Sunday on NBC.